One more comment on uh, on last year's debacle. Um, reading a BBC article, uh, scientist that was the WHO's, the World Health Organization's um, pandemic preparedness expert three years ago, so he wasn't last year. He was quoted as saying, uh, you know, it's easy for me to say this in retrospect, but uh, to go to a phase six, which is the top tier um, emergency alert, yeah. alert stockpile, your antivirals mandate uh, vaccination, where we were last year, he says he doesn't understand how we got to that point because the World Health Organization should have been looking to the Southern Hemisphere, Australia, New Zealand, where they were reporting a very mild flu season last year. Uh, and so he was just questioning what was the decision-making process in right. that. In addition to um, the World Health Organization has kept in secret who their panel is and what their, what their ties are to industry because they don't want them to be influenced because um, of the wide repercussions worldwide of their decision. Well, at this point, we should know who was on the panel. Right. It's still I mean, not it's coming out. And it would be nice ridiculous. to know, well, who has industry ties? I mean, please. Yeah. Are we just... What do you, what do you take us for out here? So, yeah. all right. Um, I'll stop ranting well, on that. No, that's good. I mean, we could just keep <laughs> well, ranting. We'll, we will keep ranting. You know, one uh, article <laughs> that had to do with the, the, um, the upcoming cold and flu season that I just read, some a friend of mine forwarded to me, uh, was in the New York right. Times. <laughs> yeah. This is great. Um, so this was in the New York Times, and it was talking about how, if you're going to, if you get the cold, how you can prevent from getting uh, a bad cold. And the secret is to not have too good of an immune system. <laughs> right. Wink, wink. Seriously, this is like <laughs> preventative medicine. That's brilliant. It's brilliant. Uh, and the argument <laughs> is that um, a, a good immune system is not going to protect you from getting a cold in the first place. And the thing is, if you get a cold or the flu, what makes you feel bad is your immune response to it. And so uh, the, the logic here is that if you just don't have too good of an immune system, you won't feel as bad when you get the cold. And that way, you know, you won't be quite as miserable. There are so many things wrong with that idea. Like, you, we just can't even... In okay, fact, where do you go with that? That's in the New York Times. Of, where do you go with right, such Somebody absurdity. really making that point for uh, don't have too good of an immune system. So one place we can go with that <laughs> piece of absurdity is to go straight into the evidence that vitamin D, right. which is a fantastic immune booster, is also probably the single best documented preventative against the flu. Right. Um, instead of handing out vaccinations, our public health services should be handing out doses of vitamin D. Right. You don't even have to hand them out now, right? You were saying you get to drive oh, the through. Vaccination. Yeah. Just drive up, yeah, put your back, arm out the window. Drive through vaccinations. <laughs> you just do, we should do that with acupuncture. Right. Maybe it would. Uh, vitamin D though, I mean that is, and you've heard us harp on this podcast on vodcast after vodcast uh, <laughs> and podcast, whichever way you're listening or watching. Um, you know, vitamin D on, you should be getting your vitamin D status checked. It should be part of your regular blood work. If it isn't, ask your doctor to do that for you. Um, you ideally you want your levels between 50 and 80. Um, so that's where I'll go with that. Yeah, it goes, I mean, it's so far beyond just prevention of the flu, cold and flu, um, but also into cancer prevention and so many other you know, diabetes and so many other things are benefited that it is, it's, imperative at this point it should be you're right part of all blood work so between be but without doing the three steps that the cdc recommends which is the flu vaccine wash your hands and stay away from sick people and then if you get sick do antivirals um which <laughs> is public health policy which is just it is insanity it's um, insanity yeah so what what can you actually do right these are the non-sexy naturopathic things you get adequate rest yeah. Right? You got to get your sleep. Don't stress yourself out. You want to decrease your stress. So if that means taking some time off of work, definitely play more and laugh more. Right. I mean, those are the things, I mean, those things that actually show they, in the like, research that like, it increases your immune system function. So go figure. I mean, simple things like that. You want to be well hydrated. Right. Half your body weight in ounces is what we recommend. The uh, You know, coming into the holidays, I think... In so many ways, the winter season is like the perfect storm for 
for colds and flus because not only do we have less less sunlight, which means less vitamin D, and when vitamin D goes down, it's very well clear, clearly established. But we also come into the holiday season, which means you know so right. much sweets. overeating and sweets, both of which decrease our immunity. For a lot of people, there's more depression around the holidays, right? And that is going to do it. Movement decreases. Movement decreases. Right. There's more, you know, drinking is often a part of it, and that's going to decrease it. You know, staying up later. Any, you know, yeah. holidays are associated with a lot of activities that are very well established independently. Each one of them will decrease immunity. And so you put it all together, right? and it's like, there you go. So if you want to help prevent getting the cold and flu, you just look at each of those risks and you don't do it. So you don't overeat. What are you saying you to be just a, stress, a recluse? You should go <laughs> sit on read the mountaintop. and go read. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't mean be a recluse, but it does mean to be aware that right. engaging in you know eating a lot of sweets <laughs> right. and not getting enough sleep and all those things are going to increase the likelihood that somebody's going to get the cold or flu. So functionally uh, functioning optimally is what we advocate. Uh, I can't say that five times yeah. really quickly. Well, so what happens with if you do get sick, the flu or uh, cold? You know, I think I like to dub it just influenza-like illness, right? They did all of that research last year around H1N1. Um, I think it was one of the main networks in the U.S., CBS, I believe, mm -hmm. did a... Oh, yeah. Did, they actually went in and tested the samples that Florida, I believe, a couple states were calling California, the California. H1N1, and they found relatively none of them were H1N1. They all got dubbed H1N1, and so those stats... You know, we did report on this last right. year as well. Of they stopped confirming uh, via laboratory test right. uh, because it was there are a lot of different reasons, but it was all assumed to be H one N one. Right. I've also had a lot of patients this year say, "Well, should I get the flu uh, vaccine?" Um, a few of them did actually get the flu last year, and they said it was their worst flu ever. But I, I, I mean, I guess I question it a little bit, like. They assumed that they had the swine flu, and when I tell them, well, all the research shows you actually didn't have H1N1, um, they are they question me on it. But you know, I, that's why I call it just influenza-like illness, and it's not fun to go through. Right. It is a healing response. Uh, so what the things that we recommend that you can do if you do come down with the flu or a bad cold, or one of our favorites are warming socks. Uh, when we learned it, it was called wet socks. So the new PC term is warming socks. Uh, it's still the same process. You know, you put your feet in a hot foot bath at nighttime. Or just take a warm, warm, warm bath, shower warm bath. Anything that can warm the feet up. You have two pairs of socks, white cotton and wool. Uh, the white cotton socks you put under the spigot. As cold as it'll go, you wring them out so that they're damp, not dripping. Put those directly on your hot feet. Pull the wool socks over top. Go directly to bed. Do not pass go. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and what that does is increases your circulation, so it's a little bit of a home hydrotherapy treatment. Um, I'm not recommending, this is not medical advice, I'm just giving you what we've seen work in our and clinic. so many people come back telling us that it's fantastic. Yeah. Like for sleep, it works great with kids, when kids have earaches or stuff, anything, nose or anything, up, yeah. anything up here. Adults, kids, both. Um, it really is a fantastic. Yeah, so do that for as the... cheap as you can get. For, at the beginning for, of... Uh, first signs of illness and do that for several nights in a row. That'll really help boost your immune system function. Um, we've got Epsom salt baths for that achiness uh, in yep. the body. If you do get the chills, fever, um, and the body ache from just the amount of virus dying off. And, and that's, yeah, yeah, that's really like three, four, even five cups of Epsom salt right, a lot. in a hot bath. The hot is key because you really want your skin to get red because that means blood is there and the magnesium that is in the Epsom salt then exchanges through the skin into that blood. So the warmer, the more blood to your skin, the greater the magnesium, uh, the amount that gets in. So, Increasing vitamin C intake. Yeah, absolutely. So there are certain things that, you know, preventative that we think of like vitamin C, you know, kind of you can't go wrong with a gram or two a day. Right. And just preventative, vitamin D, preventative, garlic preventative. And then if somebody gets sick, I mean, the right. vitamin C level can go up. I mean, you, you don't know until you just test how much your body actually needs.